The spirit of Mardi Gras 2021 lives on through the shared memories of Mardi Gras past. I am too. You know, it's not often that a professional athlete gained such great recognition because of their personal performance and not because they were with a winning team. But that's the case with Steve's great, iconic Archie Manning. Archie, thanks for joining us. Oh, Scoot, it's my pleasure. Glad to be with you, pal. I know you've got some great Mardi Gras memories, especially maybe with the kids, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I have to tell you, I have to thank you, because I had just gotten into radio. I was, I was brand new in the business, and I called the Saints, and I managed to get an interview with you. And you were the first interview that I've ever done. I went out to Saints training camp uh, on David Drive with my tape recorder, and you were there in your practice uniform right after practice, and you were a larger-than-life and, and you were larger than me. I mean, I had to hold the microphone way up to your to your face. But you made me <laughs> hero in some ways. I mean, I, I played that interview to people before I went on the air with it. I played it on the air, and I had people say, hey, you're really a good interviewer. That interview with you inspired me to make interviewing part of my career. So I thank you for that, and it was just such a great moment for me. Well, was, that was my pleasure, Scoot. And uh, gosh, it's been a, it's been a long time ago. Uh, you know, a lot of things for us is, is come up 50 in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, Livy and I celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. And one week later, I got drafted by the, by the New Orleans Saints. So we were in the process 50 years ago of uh, finishing up school and then uh, coming down to New Orleans and moving in the summer. And uh, we, we've been here 50 years. That is amazing. It's an amazing accomplishment for you and Olivia. Uh, Archie, w when you were with the Saints, you, you knew you were great and everybody knew you were great and you got great recognition. You're in the Hall of Fame. What motivated you during those years when the Saints were not a winning team? Well, just the thought that we could get it done one day. You know, the one thing, <laughs> the one thing we did, we changed coaches a lot. And yeah. uh, that happens with uh, losing uh, organizations that aren't, aren't winning. You, you know, you got, you got to win. So they, they fire the coach. Well, uh, yeah, you kind of keep thinking this is going to be the right combination. This is going to be the right one. And we're going to put it together. Actually, too, in those days, it, it, the games changed quite a bit. It was really hard to build a, a, a winning, winning team. It was, pre it was pretty hard. It took years. Once you got there, though, you look around. Back in those days, the good teams were – all oh, the Rams were good. The uh, 49ers were good. The Cowboys were good. It, but if you built a good team, you could, you could hang on for a while. You know, you, you won for several years. But it was hard to get there. And the Saints, we kept, they kept changing coaches. A lot of times they changed people in the front office. Obviously, when that happens, you change players. And um, we just never, it took, it took years and years. And it was after I was gone till they, they finally got it right. Archie, you told a great story once about a coach and I don't remember the coach. It might've been Bum Phillips, but this coach is giving you this pregame speech and he's talking about all the things that this team is going to do to you. This, they're going to try and run. They're going to try to pass. They're going to try and do all this stuff, all these specific things. And you were somebody pointed out, but coach, we're not playing them this week. <laughs> that was a Bum Phillips story. You know, Bum Bum was a funny guy, and uh, he came over here after his years in in Houston. And I think Bum was kind of looking maybe to, to the end of the line. I think deep down he wanted to win, have a winning season here, and maybe turn it over to his son Wade, who, who by the way is a, a heck of a coach. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Bum just one day he was giving us a little pregame talk and. <laughs> Just he kind of just got a little mixed up. He was saying what when he was over in Houston that they didn't have any problem with the Falcons and um, didn't think the Falcons were really a tough bunch and that we're going to be able to beat the Falcons today. And of course, I was captain of the team and I was looking around making a little eye contact with my Derwin Moore and Bobby Scott and Joe Federsville, some teammates. But the end of the day, we had to inform Bob that we were playing the Buccaneers that <laughs> afternoon. So, uh, <laughs> 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 Such a great story. Archie, so uh, Peyton now joins you in the Hall of Fame. Eli's got a couple of uh, Super Bowl victories. Cooper has been part of your, your business world. And now Cooper's son, your grandson, is like a top-ranked quarterback at Newman High School. You know, as great as you were as a football player, your greatest role has been maybe as a father. 
Well, we we've been so blessed, Scoot. Um, we had three three sons, and they all were healthy and and uh, grew up here in in New Orleans. So uh, a lot of times, if somebody pays those boys as a whole some compliments, I always give credit where it's due, and that's to their mother, Olivia. And uh, if if they impress people that they're grounded and got their head on right, she she's the reason. But we were. Um, it, it was really fun raising those boys, you know, all of them, they, all three are different, all three are different. And, uh, but, uh, Cooper kind of had a little tough. Cooper was the oldest and loved sports, loved sports, loved football. Looks like he was going to get a chance to play college football, but, um, his, his days got cut a little short and, uh, but he handled it well. He had a great spirit uh, about it. And I think that was, a uh, it impressed his, his little brothers how to, how to handle adversity right there. So now, um, yeah, grandchildren are, are fun. We have nine of them. Um, oh. uh, Arch is the oldest. Boy, uh, our oldest grandchild is May, which is Arch's sister. She's graduating from Sacred Heart this year and off to college next year. But uh, Arch is a sophomore. His little brother Hyde is a freshman here in, in New Orleans. They're at Newman School, and uh, they're, they're enjoying football. I think about all the games that you have been to over the years with Peyton and with Eli, and now you're going to be going to games with 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 Arch. And I think back, and I, I know that your that your dad was, was he was very involved. He wanted to be more involved in your your sports activities and your sports career in high school and, and when you were younger. But his job didn't allow him to always be there. Your mom was always there, but your dad wasn't always there. Do you think? Do you think some in some way you? subconsciously are trying to make sure that your sons get maybe something you didn't have? Oh, I think a little bit. We, um, we tried to keep things in perspective when they, uh, were playing sports and as, as they advanced and, uh, we're having a lot of success. I, I, I didn't like the heavy involvement from the parental side. I, I kind of had a theory, um, you stand on the top row of the stadium and keep your mouth shut. And, uh, but, but we were there. Uh, we we were going to be there, and we were going to support them and all the, whether it be football or baseball or basketball or, or whatever, some other school activity. And I think they appreciate that. Um, and I think they appreciate the fact that, you know, me being a former player, Scoot, that I didn't get too involved. That, that you know, they I, I let their coaches do the coaching, and I tried to just be the uh, be a the daddy, and be there for them and, and that kind of support. Well, you did a, you've done a great job. Archie, uh, you've been here since 1971. I know you've got some Mardi Gras memories and some of them might go back to uh, before you had kids, but um, let's, let's go back to young Peyton, young Eli, young Cooper. Let's talk about those years of them going to praise with you. What was that like? Sure. Um, in our early years here, Olivia and I, before we had children, we, we lived out in Metairie. Uh, we may have gone to a parade or so, but I, you know, basically I think in those days we, we got out of town. We'd go back to Mississippi because we, I didn't really understand it. I, I didn't understand Mardi Gras or what it, what it was, but yeah, children came along. Uh, we moved up town. We lived on seventh street and they got old enough to, to go to the, go, go to just two and a half blocks to St. Charles Avenue. And seventh street was a busy corner. It was seventh and St. Charles, very busy as, as the years went by, it was kind of a, a high school gathering place. There were, you know, people who lived down the street that had high school age children. And that became kind of where they gathered. So uh, my crew, young, you know, I can remember starting out the big deal, of course, is you take your ladder up there. Yeah. And uh, we got our ladder. And um, this was really Cooper and Peyton first because Eli was five years younger. But, you know, they would uh, they'd get in the ladder and then uh, they'd want me to get – up the stairs and be behind them and of course i was the quarterback of the new orleans saints at the time and the the um, parade the floats go by and <laughs> the guys you know some of them have a cocktail or two on those floats and um <laughs> and some of them would at times would recognize me and uh start unloading you know, beads and spears and what have you, and get a little carried away. I can remember just how many times uh, Cooper and Payton get hit in the face with with beads that came in there a little too hard. And I'm trying to trying to catch stuff, but trying to protect them. It was fun for them though, and uh, that's kind of how it, that's kind of how it started. Um, 
Um, it, now, as we move along, we we moved. We just moved six blocks. We moved to First Street. We're even closer to the avenue. We're just a block and a half, which means Mardi Gras weekend, Mardi Gras day, you get a lot of company. Um, and First Street, what different than so is that First Street seemed to be kind of the, a college gathering place. I can well remember Scoot on, um, I think it would be on Sunday before Mardi Gras day, the Deeks from LSU would put a flatbed truck on the street, on the right, on the right side, on First Street, and they would spend the, they would just sleep out and spend the weekend there, and uh, that was pretty eventful, uh, pretty entertaining, and um, and then it, it, as we move along, I guess some of my fondest memories it was boys in college. You know what you know what happens there at Mardi Gras time. Yes, um, they come home from Mardi Gras and bring a lot of friends, and uh, so being that close to the um, to the avenue our our big deal was saturday all day saturday and have college kids I, I well remember one day i thought i would kind of try to get a little count and we had somewhere between 350 and 400 college college kids in our yard and house oh and, street and, and what have you um wow. and i remember one day the, the we would kind of entertain during the day and then the burgers down on St. Charles Avenue would have a crawfish boil at five o'clock. And I was kind of waiting for to get close to five o'clock. And I remember Olivia saying, um, I think we've run, we're going to run out of beer. And I said, good, they'll leave. So <laughs> that's, uh, th- those were, those were really fun days. Now we advanced scoot and, um, my grandkids love to come to new Orleans for Mardi Gras. They are so disappointed this year. They were not having Mardi Gras and kind of the same thing. They love to get on the avenue and love to get in the ladders and catch the beads. Well, since you were a celebrity during Mardi Gras and since you were so close to the Mardi Gras parade rows, I can't imagine that you have a, a funny Mardi Gras bathroom story. Most people do. <laughs> well, it was just pretty common. I mean, people, you know, people, people need a place. So we're, we're a block and a half away. And uh, yeah, it was a, pretty steady path uh, back and forth for various people. And of course, a lot of people maybe got enough of that parade, come down to our house and, and again, uh, don't leave, you know, just spend, spend the rest of the day there. But that was fine. It was always a fun, fun day. Um, I rode, I rode for a few years, uh, Scoot. I remember one, oh my gosh. I remember one time um, I was still playing ball. I think I was playing for the Vikings. And I accepted to be king of a St. Bernard Mardi Gras. And that was earlier in the week. Oh, my goodness. You know, I was boarded that float and went all through St. Bernard Parish and all the crowds and everything. They they had been having uh, athletes from around the country. I remember Johnny Bench did it one year and Kenny Stabler did it one year. But that was, that was a pretty uh, memorable uh, Mardi Gras. Um, and then to kind of climax that, Scoot, um, last year was uh, this. We, we uh, it was going to be a kind of a special Mardi Gras here, and um, uh, a good friend Story Charbonnet was King of Rex, and he and his whole motorcade came by to toast uh, me and Olivia on a on a Mardi Gras. And uh, the best thing I got from that is Story brought me a Rex football signed. You know, I've got a lot of footballs uh, through the years for various reasons, but I have a Rex football signed by the King, Story Charbonnet. It's got a special place in, in my trophy case. Archie, when you were on that float and you were throwing the, the beads, now now you're moving, but the target's stationary. Did you ever bring up any of your quarterback skills in trying to get the beads to somebody? Yeah, I, I was trying to tell, you know, my arm was good in those days. I, it, it was some people in some spots along the route that was pretty – pretty far off and the guys I was riding to, you know, we had, we had some footballs on there and some, you know, small footballs and some items that could, could go a little further distance. So yeah, they, they, they put a little challenge to me a time or two to see if I could reach somebody, you know, up high on a balcony or far away. So that was a fun time. You know, what was great. Now, nobody knew who I was, Scoot, you know, your mask and your riding. And I remember the first time I rode and we turned, on on Canal Street, and somebody said, 
there's a million people on Canal Street today. That, that, that really overwhelmed me. It really did. It is. Archie, it is so great to talk to you. You're such a, such a great, iconic, comforting figure in New Orleans. And um, thank you for being here and for being part of the community and always, um, always giving back as much as you can. And uh, thank you for this time. Congratulations to you and Olivia, 50 years of, uh, of marriage. And really to you as a father and to you um, as, a, as a husband. Thank you. And uh, thanks for sharing your Mardi Gras memory with us. Okay. Thanks a lot, Scoop. All right, Archie. Great day with you, pal. Thanks.